Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to McLean's TV. Delighted to say I'm joined by uh, one of our regular uh, contributors, All Ireland winner with Armagh, captain of the international rules team as well. Ulster medal is coming out of his back pocket. The one and only Stephen McDonald. Stevie, we've reached the climax of the season. Dublin against Mayo. It's fair to say the two best teams in the country are in the All Ireland final. Absolutely, two best teams by a country mile. And you know, at the semi-final stage, we were the whole country. Is Possibly hoping that it would be a, a Dublin Mayo final. Well, because speak for thrown people. They want to get the exactly. Mayo. <coughs> you know, Mayo throughout the year have been fantastic, and you know, certainly in the semi final, thrown people up them in the first half. But you know, when, when they come out in the second half, they're a totally different animal, and they prove why they are a top class side. And and the brush thrown aside, and um, no dis disrespect to Tyrone, but um, certainly you know Dublin. Then you have to you know, just stand back and watch an awe at some of their displays this year, um, none more so than their last performance against uh, a Kerry team. You know, how many teams can, can cope with Kerry scoring three goals against them in the first half and still come out in the, the right end of the, the scoreline? And uh, there's not too many and certainly Dublin will be the better for that. Well now, before we talk about the final, I think we should go back and revisit the, the semi-final because mm -hmm. the, both semi-finals exposed weaknesses in both finalists because when you take a look at Mayo, Mayo were put to the pin of their collar for at least 30 minutes in the first half where Tyrone ran them ragged Absolutely. and with a bit more luck and a few more calls from a referee they could have been way way in front of Mayo. Yeah listen, no disrespect to, to the other two teams but Dublin and, and Mayo are, are the top two teams in the country but Tyrone and Kerry are third and fourth you know and, and that's where they are and when you get to a semi-final stage you're going to cause the opposition problems regardless of, of who they are and certainly in the first uh, match the, the throne and mayo game throne caused mayo serious problems in, in that first half and and you know possibly could have gone in uh, maybe four or five points up but it was it was a, a couple of points before half time that really kept mayo in, in the driving seat you know and gone out in the second half and um, they really believed in themselves and, and, and what they're about but you know, you look at then the, the Kerry Dublin semi final, a lot of people. Well, before you go on to that, listen, I, I, I want to make a point. I was disappointed uh, that Tyrone almost fell away before the, the, the end of the break, but I was also impressed. Mayo in the past, I think, would have probably collapsed there like a deck of cards. It shows the new metal, I think, of this Mayo yeah, side. Yeah, there is, there is a certain steel with this Mayo side at the minute. And I actually thought um, in the first half of, of the Tyrone match that, you know, that metal, uh, mental block w was still there with them when Kevin McLaughlin, if you remember back, missing the, the mm -hmm. 21 yard free, I Oof, thought, is this Mayo all over again, thrown, have, have got inside their skin and, and they're going to rattle them here big time. But then, you know, they did kick a couple of points before half time, it seemed to settle them again, they come out in the second half, a totally different team, and you know, they were kicking their opportunities as in the first half, they weren't taking them. and. And, and and led by their by their de, by their defenders because the forwards weren't on form. The defenders came through to get those vital scores. It, w it was uh, and and cornerbacks were coming up and getting uh -huh. scores on. And it's always great to see that. And it shows the mentality of this Mayo side that the full confidence in their belief. And you know, they play with a certain flair at the minute and and, and a desire. And and they, they are there's a, there's an arrogance about this Mayo side uh, as if to say that you know come and get us, come at us, throw whatever you have at us, and, and we'll react to it. Now the semi final obviously Dublin against Kerry. And uh, Mickey Hart was writing in the the Irish News and got a bit of stick for it, like because he started to pick out a lot of the uh, the things that were wrong in that game. That was a fabulous game, but he did have a point. Uh, if you take away from the hysteria of some people getting annoyed about him, he does have a point. There was some very naive defending there by Dublin to allow Kerry in to score three goals. That surely has to give Mayo. Yeah, absolutely. And and Mayo are certainly. Uh, one of the better teams of scoring goals in the, in this year's championship alone, you know. But um, listen, there was naive defend, but both teams made no uh, secret about it. You know, they were going to go out to uh, try to outscore each other, and you know, if that left them a wee bit open in, in, at the back, then so be it. But um, you know, the the first half in particular, from from a Kerry point of view, w was an awesome display. A display that. Um, not too many people were expecting from them and, and obviously the Gooch put on a fantastic display from centre half forward and he was probably the main reason why, why Kerry uh, went in at half time um, leading in that match and um, you know Dublin, uh, yeah, I go back to the point I made earlier on, how many teams can react to Kerry mm -hmm. scoring three goals against them in the first half and still come out and win the match and the, the, the answer is there's not too many and, and Dublin are certainly um, well worth their, their place in this, this year's All-Ireland yeah. Final because of that. 
the thing about Dublin too, and, and we talked about it before, the, the thing that makes them even stronger, you know, I, I look at the Mayo bench, I don't think the Mayo bench compares to the Dublin no. bench. They can bring on players, you know, th they can bring on players that are equally as good yeah. to put in positions, and that was the key as well against Kerry, because they can bring on quality to replace quality. There's no doubt about it. Dean Rock would walk into any county team in the country uh, and be in the starting 15. Kevin McManaman, yep. to me, he's one of the strongest ball carriers in the game and an exceptionally talented fo footballer. He comes on and does a great job for them every time because he's a top class player and he, if he was in any other county, he'd be starting once again. They've got a really, really strong bench and that, that has carried them across the line in a couple of matches this year. You know, when they haven't been performing at their maximum, they've still you know, relied heavily on their bench and it's going to take 20 men once again this All-Ireland Final but that is the key difference between the two teams I think is Dublin's bench and their ability to pull boys from the bench and to get big scores. And a massive loss for Mayo, you know, Killian O'Connor out, one of their star players, they got a cruel blow for the lad, yeah. an awful blow for him to miss an All-Ireland after the second double injury blow but it's, it's, a, it's a vital loss for Mayo. At the time, you know, okay they were able to, to cope with their own and, get, and they got rid of it but when you know, whenever reality sets in about the Monday yeah. or Tuesday, I'd say, you know, Horn's looking at it and going, what a loss. Yeah, absolutely. Killian O'Connor, young player of the year for the last two years, a fantastic uh, talent. Um, potentially one of the most dangerous forwards in the game at the minute. But, you know, Mayo have to get over it, get over that there and, and, you know, rely on the players that they have on the pitch. And, and this year, the advantage that they have over last year is that Andy Moran is going to be uh, taking his place and starting 15. And he's a fantastic player for this Mayo team. Um, Alan Freeman, if you look at his performance against Tyrone also in the semi-final, he really stepped up the plate when, 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 when it was needed. And, mm -hmm. you know, he put in a solid, solid performance. And, you know, he's also another key player. That, and you know if you compare him this year compared to last year I think he's maybe matured a wee bit more as a forward and and has taken that wee bit more responsibility on the shoulders as well. Three or four weeks ago everybody was putting Mayo as uh, the favourites for all Ireland but now even here with McLean's I think the odds have gone the other way. Dublin are now the favourites uh, to win this game. Some people are describing it as it's going to be a close affair you know, Mayo almost, you know, if, uh, as Jerry Armstrong made the point, he was talking about it, you know, if, if they played the All-Ireland final a couple of months ago, Mayo might, might have been yeah. the team, but now it looks as if Dublin have actually just, just stepped beyond them. Yeah, what we have here, we've got the most skillful team in the country in Mayo. I, I believe they're most talented forwards and footballers in the country in this Mayo side against the best athletes in the country and there's Fleur as well in the Dublin side. And, you know, overall, I look at that and, and I think that, you know, because of the physical strength of this Dublin team and, and the backup that they have in their bench, I've tipped Dublin from the start. I'm going to stay with Dublin. The likes of Bernard Brogan, Jamer Connolly, they've got top class forwards that have been there and have produced it in the past in the All-Ireland Final. And I believe that, that that experience of two years ago, beating Kerry two years ago, will stand to this uh, Dublin team come Sunday and they'll come out on top. It's going to be a heartbreak again listening to you for Mayo, 1951, you know. If you're a Mayo fan, you know, the belief, you know, I was even looking at the, I thought it was quite funny, at the, you know, the Tour de France earlier this mm -hmm. year, you know, it had Mayo for Sam, you know, on, on the, the stage in Abduez mm. and stuff like that, you know, and like they're doing their usual, they're painting their cows, their sheep, Absolutely. their houses, their cars, the whole lot. Like you would be heartbroken for them. Absolutely, you know, and it, it is that close. It's probably the closest all Iron final, uh, you know, in years. and. I wouldn't be surprised if Mayo win it at the same time and I don't think anyone in the, in the whole country you know, will be disappointed if Mayo win it. We'd all love to see them win it after so much heartache over the past 20 years alone. But um, I just think um, experience, talent, strength, the bench, everything is stacked in, in Dublin's favour and, and the fact that this game is in, in Croke Park once again. But Mayo have had the upper hand in Dublin over the last couple of years and that'll be in the back of Dublin's minds as well and they will be looking to rectify that. Uh, I was at an event in Kalisha on Saturday night, a celebration for Kevin Hughes, all the top stars were there, you weren't there yourself, anyway, but uh, Daryl Shea was there, <laughs> Peter Cannavan was nice there, dig that. <laughs> the likes of Tierney, you know, obviously Hub Hughes himself, mm -hmm. Mickey Hart, people like that, and they all said what we're all saying, that they couldn't deny Mayo to win an All-Ireland, but yet they're now going for Dublin. And I haven't said that. You couldn't deny Dublin either. I think no. they're two of the most, is this a stage, two of the most likeable teams yeah. in the All-Ireland final. Exa I, I like Dublin. Exactly, <laughs> I like Dublin as well. And, uh, you know, I always, as a player, I always enjoy playing against Dublin because of the atmosphere. And, and it's, it's a carnival atmosphere that the whole supporters uh, bring to the, to the occasion. And, you know, it's going to be no different this Sunday. It's going to be a fantastic electric atmosphere in Crook Park. Mayo supporters are fantastic. 
fantastic as well. They travel in big numbers, and um, they will have high hopes going into Croke Park on Sunday. And the very reason of high hopes because any one of these teams can win. But I'm just basing my my opinion and and the reason why I think Dublin will win just totally because of their experience of being there in the past and, and the bench that they have they got to rely on. I'm going to throw you a wee curveball through the minor game, Tyrone against uh, Mayo. Can Tyrone do it? They'd be the underdogs. Mayo would yeah. be the team. They were, they were fantastic in their semi-final display. Uh, you know, Mayo maybe could start the day with a minor win. What do you think? Yeah, it possibly can. <coughs> but, um, you know, you have to look at Tyrone tr- uh, too. And they've come through a couple of tough games. And, you know, even the last year against Roscommon, you know, their backs were against the wall for a long period of time. And, and they came through that in the last 10, ten minutes of the match and, and you know, performed... Um, at that stage of the match, what would you expect to win it? And, and they came through it in flying colours. But, um, you know, on previous uh, matches, you have to fancy May Ogan into this match. But I wouldn't rule out Throne. Any time Throne gets to an All Ireland final, you know, you have to fancy them. And they're always going to be in with a ch- shant- chance. Sorry. And, you know, I think that Throne can and, and have every reason to go up, up to Crow Park and Sunday confident and they can win this match. What an occasion is going to be. You know, you talk about the senior game. I changed my mind. I don't know how many times about this. Yeah. I listened to all the lads, all the experts. All your arguments are completely and totally compelling. I have a brother in law from Westport and. Uh, Whenever Mayo, whenever, whenever, whenever your own team is beaten, you always look to the yeah. team, and I know I rub Mayo people up the wrong way. Whenever they played Donegal, I'm going to go for Mayo, you know, just for a bit. I'm just going to go for the outsiders because I just think the belief they'll have, yeah. the quality they'll have, they're going, they remind me of, of uh, yourselves, Armagh and Tyrone. I always talk about going over the Charlemagne Bridge on the way going to the 2002 All-Ireland Final and the Armagh lads through Joe Kern and yourself just had a big banner up and all it said was believe. Yeah. And that was Armagh going to play Kerry, who were the greatest side that we had ever seen. And Armagh won it, Stevie. Yeah. I just think there's a chance. Well, listen, there's always a chance. And um, when you've got forwards like Alan Freeman, Alan Dillon, Andy Moore, you, you've always got a real good chance. And if Mayo can get enough quality ball into them boys, and the backup that they've been getting from the O'Shea's in midfield and their half back line as well this year, if they get enough quality ball up in that score zone, Mayo will put a, put the. Uh, put the ball over the barn in the back of the net you know this is not the old Mayo team you know that created so many opportunities and, and, and failed to deliver when the opportunity was there but this is a, a Mayo team that are ruthless when the opportunity presents itself and if they get enough quality ball in them, in them score zones they can punish that Dublin defence No, I must go, I, 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 I sort of half finished up but I do, I do want to uh, talk to you about that the, the two O'Shea lads in the middle of the field mm-hmm. you know like I remember uh, the, the young lad Aidan O'Shea playing in the, all, in the minor replay and Kyle Coney was the big name for Tyrone and they were the two class acts and Kyle seemed to have gone back a wee bit yeah. but O'Shea is fantastic but I like the brother the brother does yeah. an awful lot of the donkey work well, and I like them there you know, at, they're at number 8 and number 9 they've got a great partnership and you know obviously they've grown up playing with each other uh, throughout their years and you know, when you look at Aidan's performance against Donegal in the quarter final, it, it was just a remarkable performance and one of the best midfield displays uh, in in years. And you know, a lot of is he held on for an All Star midfield? I, w- I would imagine so. Uh, my All Star midfield would have to be um, himself. Megaldar McCauley is going to be in, in the shout there, mm-hmm. in a chance as well. But Sean Kevin would be my um, mm-hmm. other choice for midfielder at the minute. But, you know, when all the focus was on Aidan O'Shea going into the semi-final, it was his brother to step up to the mark and put in a fantastic display. And that shows that, you know, there's not an over-reliance on Aidan, that Shims can also step up and perform at that high level in key games. And, you know, it'll be just, uh, it'll be a very interesting battle because they're going in against Michael Dar McCauley and Keanu Sullivan. Probably not Dublin's best midfield partnership, but Michael Dar McCauley has been exceptionally good this year for Dublin as well in driving forward. But defensively, sometimes they neglect their duties, and that's where the O'Shea brothers can really. And the uh, chances are, we 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 we'll see both keepers up to kick free kicks as well. Too, won't we, as well? we will. We'll be some games. I'm uh, really, really looking it, forward. It's to an All Ireland final that the whole country is looking forward. To. It is the two best teams. We don't normally get this in an All Ireland final that the two best teams in the country, the teams that have performed at such a high level all year, have made it to the final and avoided each other. That's what we're faced with this year. It's you know everyone's looking forward. To it. It's going to be. A good style of football. You, you imagine it's going to be a good attacking brand of football. There's going to be high scores. We're going to get goalkeepers and everything in, in the mix and the scoring charts. And, and you know, it definitely has the makings of being an all-time uh, great final. When I look at the All Ireland series over about the past ten years, 2003, I think was a fantastic final ourselves and and uh, Armagh. Not because thrown one, but they were the two best sides. It is and because Armagh. thrown one. Oh, well, okay, well, everyone else could throw one, but it was fantastic occasion. Yeah. Usually, usually with the defending champions in 2002, 2005, we got the the two teams. 
people wanted. Yeah. In 2008, we probably got the two teams that wanted. Then last year's final was a great final too, from a Donegal perspective. Like this is, it's like it just makes it so special. Eighty-two thousand yeah. people. Have you got tickets? I, I have tickets, yeah. Any spare tickets? I'm, well, I was asking you for. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, fair enough. Then. But Is you're that going two for tickets Dublin? hanging out of your back pocket. No, I can tell you, they wouldn't be hanging in my back pocket, <laughs> I can tell you that. So you're going for Dublin, Stephen? I'm going for Dublin, yeah. Um, I, I, I predicted Dublin from the start of the championship. I'm, I'm going to stay with them, you know. Anything can happen in all Ireland final day. Dublin can freeze, Mayo can freeze, and Mayo have froze <laughs> so often in the past in, in all Ireland finals. But, you know. I just fancy Dublin on this occasion. I would love to see Mayo win, of course. I'd love to see Dublin win. As you say, it's two, <coughs> excuse, me. <coughs> excuse me, two very likeable teams, mm -hmm. but it's Dublin's for me. Well, there you are. I'm going to have to go with Mayo. My heart is no in my head. Like I'd say, listen, Dublin probably are the team they got, but I'm, what, what odds? It's only a two match. I'm going to go for Mayo. Stevie, thanks very much. Good God bless you. Thank you.